the gift of the Spirit, interestingly, profits all other people probably except you. It's not meant for you. When I stand here to sing and you're blessed, yes, I'm blessed because I'm glorifying the King of Glory. But the people who are receiving your music is not you. It's the people. It's meant for the profiting of other people. Many, many times, especially for prophecy, I've always taught you, you will know it is not the Lord. If two things happen, number one, there is no peace within you. Number two, there is no confirmation within you. Episode of Apostle Paul to the Corinthians, I'm looking at chapter 12. And when you got that chapter, I am certain that you know that we are dealing more with spiritual gifts. The Bible says that now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, it says, I do not want you to be ignorant. And Apostle Paul, settling on that, I'm still on the same scripture. That's how he begins. Remember, Apostle Paul in the first letter of Corinthians, he is ad addressing a myriad of spiritual problems. And one of them was matters regarding spiritual gifts. But I want you to look at that word, ignorant. It's simply telling that you must operate in full knowledge when it comes to spiritual gifts. In the first two, it tells them that uh, you know that you are Gentiles. You know that nini munajua mulikuwa watu wa mataifa mengine. You are being carried away to these dump idols however you are led. Tell them that the idols were carrying you and leading you to a certain direction. In the first three, it tells them, therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a cast, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. And first fourth says, there are diversities of gifts by the same Spirit. I'd like us actually to read from first four together. You ready? Let's go. There are diversities of gifts but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries but the same Lord. There are diversities of activities but it is the same God who works all in all. First number seven. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. First number eight. For one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, and to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit, and to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. First number 11. But one and the same Spirit works all things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. First 12 and the last one. For as the body has many members, but, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so is Christ. The Lord bless you. Shall we be seated in the presence of God? Heavenly Father, I thank you for the incorruptible, invaluable, immutable word of Yeshua which you have laid in my mouth, in my heart, and in my spirit. I pray that, dear Lord, as I speak this word, your grace will flow to build, to establish, to add to the knowledge and the wisdom of the spirit to the lives of your people. I pray, dear Lord, as I proclaim this word, the anointing of your spirit will proceed uh, from your word. Build and bless your people. The Bible says that you sent your word and your word healed your people. Lord, where there's a situation that requires an impartation of life, I release it in the name of Jesus. With authority and power and a clarity of speech, Lord, I proclaim this word. To you be honor and glory in Jesus' majestic name we pray. And God's people say, Amen. Amen. Today, you realize we are coming to the conclusion of the series about the Holy Spirit and the, regarding the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which we began in the month of May. And you realize that the subject of the Holy Spirit is a subject we can never fully exhaust. And today, I want to talk about manifesting spiritual gifts. 
manifesting spiritual gifts. That one of the spiritual experiences that powerfully transforms the life of a believer is manifesting your spiritual gift. When God wants to transform your life, one of those dynamic experiences that God uses to transform you is allowing you to manifest your spiritual gift. As a matter of fact, as you see the word of God, it is not you discovering the gift you have. It is you discovering how the Holy Spirit would like to manifest himself through you. Because this gift is not owned by us. This gift is owned by the Holy Spirit. The presence of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer brings a variety of personal experiences. That when the Holy Spirit indwells you, there are a variety of personal experiences you'll have. Personal experiences. One of the experiences you receive by the virtue of the Holy Spirit indwelling you is peace. That it gives you peace. And that peace becomes the albark of the will of God. That one of the things I have known is that no matter the storm, if I'm in the will of God, there will be peace within me. But when there is chaos within me, I definitely know that I'm operating on my own. It's a, it's a thing I keep doing, especially when I am doing premarital counseling. One of the difficult questions I ask the people that I love, I want to get married, I keep asking them, how do you know it's the will of God for you to marry so and so? Because feelings are temporary. You know, today you feel like this, and to, with, after one year, you can no longer sustain the feelings. But of course, God also uses those feelings to direct us to the person that he wants us to be joined for life. So I don't want us just to throw away those feelings as if they're nonsense. No, they are part of us that God wired us with them for a unique purpose. As you remember that when we were growing up, especially in the faith, and especially those of us who grew up in extreme Pentecostal experiences, you know, um, tuliamini ya kwamba lazima tuonyeshwe, uonyeshwe mutu wako, kuonyeshwa, kuonyeshwa, kuonyeshwa. Na tulisubua wa dada sana. Sababu ya nini? Kuonyeshwa. <laughs> Kwa sababu duwa likuwa na onyeshwa, lakini dada aja onyeshwa. Na hapo diyo kulikuwa na kimuzumukuti. <laughs> Kwa badugu wa mionyeshwa, lakini dada aja onyeshwa. So, dada ilikuwa kazirahizi. Kama mungu alikuonyesha, basi oba na ya fanya nini, alionyeshe. So, for the sisters, if they don't feel it, it was easy. Sema tuya kwaba, mimi sija onyeshwa. Because I also want to tell you that the Holy Spirit will not reveal to you what you don't want to know. <laughs> that if you don't want to know, just know that the Holy Spirit will not reveal it to you. Anyway, as we grew up, uh, we discovered, no, 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 we are becoming, uh, I mean, extremists in our spiritual experiences. We needed to build ourselves more firmly in the word of God. And I don't think I want to reveal the stories and the things that went about during those days. But I want to appreciate that the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life will bring a variety of personal experiences. I believe there are dreams that are occasioned by the Holy Spirit. And there are visions that come from the Holy Spirit. And there are ideas that come from the Holy Spirit. That does not mean, I've also found both ministers and people who want to spiritualize every human experience. That's not the case. That they are, God has not made a robot out of you. When the Bible says we have been made in the likeness, the image of God, we have to understand the nature and the character of God. That first and foremost, God is intelligent. And therefore, he created us as intelligent beings. And there are moments when God just wants you to utilize the faculties he has given you by the virtue of being like him. Amen. So when you are going to buy a new set of clothes, you don't ask the Holy Spirit, what color do I buy? Unaangukia na ile unafil. Amen. Na leo asubui ile guo umefaa ni ile ulifil. So ile marangi unaona hapa 
ni mwakilisho wa feelings zetu haleluya asante asante bwana asante omwami ninasikia ufunuo unaangua sawa sawa amen amen kwa hivyo ile kala unaona amevaa amen the only thing is even though ni kuna ile amevaa lakini kuna rangi nikiiona bas <laughs> But I want you to note down this because this is going to be a very informative ministration today that there are nine definite evidences showing that the Holy Spirit is the one who is moving among God's people. There are about nine evidences. So every gift recorded in scripture is an evidence of God, the Holy Spirit manifesting in your life as a believer. That's why they are called the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. So the gift of the Spirit is a manifestation of the Spirit in the life of a believer. It is an evidence that the Holy Spirit is working, is moving among his people. So what is the requirement? Every believer can desire to move in any or several of the nine gifts of the Spirit. There is no limitation. Every believer can move can desire, you can desire to move in any of the gifts. And indeed, in several of the nine gifts, you can desire. Bible says in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 31, but honestly desire, desire, desire the best gifts. And it says that yet I will show you a more excellent way, but look at that word, honest desire, the best gifts. So you can desire a gift. So the Holy Spirit deposits gifts upon you, hallelujah, on the basis of desire. You know, many people will not know that when the Lord called me to ministry, I was primarily an evangelist. I was an evangelist. I did, one of the things I didn't understand is how do you preach with notes? How do you structure your sermon? I believed in a microphone, wekewa mukalimani yapa chapa kasi. Kasi. I was that type of people, nikisimama kwa umati, nikuchapa, nikudisome neno na niombe, na nikifika pale, buwana nipe neno, ni wape. Hii ya kuprepare mapema was not part of me. But when I became a pastor, I began to desire teaching. And I gave myself to learning God's word, in, in a more structured manner that I can share it with God's people. I desired that. And almost every gift I've operated under is because I desired it. What you do not desire can never be manifested through you. Someone say amen. Honestly desire the best gifts. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 1. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 1. It says, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. And it says, but especially that you may prophesy. Listen to this. I want you to look at these scriptures. You know, I did not know there are the gifts we have, if I will use the English language for comparison, 1231 says, desire the best gifts. Desire the best gifts. 141 says, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. Then it says, but especially that you may prophesy. It means that there are some gifts that the scripture is inviting us to desire more than others. And you find that prophecy is one of them. When we talk about prophecy, we need to know that prophecy is not only when you proclaim and say, that says the Lord. And when we enter into a trance and we seem to speak the things that are captured in the realm of the spirit and delivered in the first person of God. That's not the real meaning of prophecy. I want you to know that God himself is prophecy and the word of God is the spirit of prophecy or it is a voice of prophecy. So the primary way I know in the word of God to prophesy is to proclaim God's word. You can never be in error when you proclaim God's word. So proclaiming God's word is a means of prophesying. First Corinthians 12 verse 1 where we began to read today, Apostle Paul opens this conversation and he tells the believers, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, 
I do not want you to be ignorant. Meaning, if there is an area that God wants us to operate in full knowledge, in full understanding, is spiritual gifts. It means that when we have not fully comprehended what are spiritual gifts and how they are operated, it means we operate in ignorance. And when ignorance is in operation, the devil has a field day. Where there is ignorance, the devil has a field day. But when you bring knowledge, when you bring enlightenment, the Spirit of God operates in a better way because the Spirit of God operates in a place of knowledge, in a place of understanding. So, let me show you this. The Greek word that Paul uses here for spiritual gifts is called pneumaticon. 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 It's a Greek word he uses for spiritual things. Regularly, you see us continuously making reference to Greek because we have to continuously look at the original meaning. The Greek word he uses for gift, for spiritual gifts is pneumaticon. Pneumaticon. Which literally means spiritual things. So Paul is saying, now concerning pneumaticon, now concerning pneumaticon, now concerning what? Spiritual things. Which means Apostle Paul regards spiritual gifts as spiritual things. Look at this. Paul uses this scripture or this word, spiritual things, in direct contrast with the operation of the forces of darkness. It's like he uses in direct contrast now concerning spiritual things. Because you find in verse number 2, he tells them clearly, you know that you were Gentiles. See, one time, I saw a woman of God minister, and it was just a few days when she would be delivered from being like what I can call an angel of the devil. She was a practitioner of magic. She got saved. And within a few years, two years, she was preaching and praying for people. And I can tell you there was a lot of confusion. Because the frequencies of spirit are parallel. You find that when Moses appeared before Pharaoh, and God told him, go and show yourself to Pharaoh. Appear before Pharaoh, and I will show myself before him. And Moses went confidently before Pharaoh, arrived there, and he was confident that Maze, God has said he going to show up. He will show up. So he stepped in there with that bonus. And God told him, Moses, Weka hiyo muti chini. Aka weka chini. Na muti kawa nini? Ikawa nyoka. I know from where you come from, you are told in nyoka ni shetani. Kwa hivyo kama ni wewe ungetoroka. So, hey! Yeah. <laughs> but Pharaoh also summoned the magicians and the wizards and sorcerers and they all came with their own sticks and they also threw them down and what happened that i'm saying so the two ile ya musa na hii ya wagaga were in direct contrast so i'm right to tell you the spiritual arena operates it's parallel but in opposite direction so it's not that the things that god produces the devil can't produce them the devil can still produce them so he tells them that you know you are Gentiles. In other words, if you don't shift your mind, you can come to the light and begin to manifest the same things you are manifesting while you are there. You can begin to manifest them over here. So you are being carried away by dumb idols, however you are led. What Paul wanted, he wanted the believers at Corinth to recognize the manifestation of the Holy Spirit as a supernatural experience. In other words, when you are there, you know how supernatural things were operating. So similarly, when you come into the kingdom of God, tell them that the gifts of the Spirit are within a supernatural experience. Kindly note this one down. These nine gifts, the nine gifts are important. They are not produced. The Holy Spirit imparts spiritual gifts upon believers. You cannot produce them. You cannot produce them. Simply try to say they are not talents. And they are no skill sets. You cannot develop them through training. 
We cannot teach you how to prophesy. We can't teach you how to speak in tongues. We cannot tell you how to the formula of faith. We can only be guided by the word of God. That faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. That when you hear the word of God, faith is being formed within you. But we cannot structure you and tell you, go do one, two, three, four, five. It's not a formula that you can. Because it is imparted by the Holy Spirit. Paul tells the Romans, I long to come to that. I may impart in you a gift. That gifts come by impartation. And there are many, many ways of imparting gifts. There are many ways. One way of receiving a gift impartation is by laying of hands has been passed on. But there are moments I have, you can receive a gift by admiring, listen, by, listen to this, by admiring someone who operates in a gift you desire. Because the channel you create within you and the Holy Spirit is through desire. That's the channel. You create a desire. What I began to do when I began to start teaching, I began to be attracted by preachers who teach the word of God. Yeah, and I began to listen to preachers who teach the word of God. Who when they communicate, they don't only pump empty air into my, into my soul, but they're able to pump some content into my soul. I found I was growing stronger and deeper in the knowledge of God. Because Paul says, I don't want to be ignorant. Ignorant. And the only thing that kicks away spiritual ignorance out of view is knowledge. Someone say hallelujah. Oh yes. They are not talents. They are not skill sets. So they cannot be the Lord through training. They come by the impartation of the Holy Spirit. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 7, Apostle Paul now tells them, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given, is given. The manifestation of the Holy Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. That it is the Holy Spirit who gives this, is the one who gives this. So you can depend on the Holy Spirit and he can give you. I want to dare and encourage you and tell you that most of us don't need to go to the Holy Spirit and ask you, Holy Spirit, give me a gift. I can almost tell you, for most of you, he has already given you the gift. The only thing is that you are not aware of it. You are ignorant about it. You are not aware. And you can ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you, reveal to me, which gift have you deposited in me? And again, I want to tell you, it's not magical uh, science. There's no magical art. And there's no rocket science. Begin to look at what you desire. I can tell you what you desire. That desire you have has already connected with the Holy Spirit and the manifestation is there with you. You just need to recognize it because any gift you don't recognize, you don't use. And what you don't use remains dormant. Hello? And what remains dormant after a while dies. So you need to look at what do I desire? And don't you find it funny that you always want to serve people? You really want to serve. And you find it. Kwani unalipangwa? Ninini ina kupeleka kanisa mapema? Kwani unalipwa? There is that kind of asking. They say, no, I'm not being paid, but there's something pulling me towards doing this. Is there something you can do without being paid? If you can do without being paid, then definitely know that it is the work of the Holy Spirit developing something inside of you. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. There's an interesting discovery about gifts I want you to appreciate. That the gift of the Spirit, interestingly, profits all other people probably except you. It's not meant for you. When I stand here to sing and you are blessed, yes, I'm blessed because I'm glorifying the King of Glory. But the people who are receiving your music, enjoying your, your presentation, it's not you, it's the people. It's meant for the profiting of other people. It is for the glory of God, but it is for the profiting of other people. So you must develop, you must develop a heart disposition within you that you want others to benefit. Benefit from generosity. Benefit from your love. Benefit from your care. You know, there are some of us in our church here who can be there for almost everybody. And they can do it over and over again. And 
I still know that in most of the funerals I've attended, there are certain people who I've never missed. Whether that person belongs to their care group or belongs to another department, you always find there are certain people you find. It does not mean that who, you who we don't find, you don't care. Tell you anybody, I know you care. I know you care. I know you care. I know for some of you it's because by the nature of your work, Kosababu, kuna kaisali kwanza. You know, there is that bit of it. Okay, so I'm trying to make sure that I moderate this very, very well. It's fully, fully well <laughs> understood. But what you look, note this one down. The nine spiritual gifts can be categorized into what I'm calling 252 pattern. And this is teaching I will, next Sunday, I want to come and settle on every gift individually if time will allow us. The spiritual gifts can be categorized into a 252 pattern. 252 pattern. And for this, Apostle Paul uses two Greek words to demonstrate the grouping of the nine gifts. Meaning the nine gifts can be grouped into 252. That's the pattern Apostle Paul uses. He uses two Greek words. The first one he uses, he uses uh, eteros, 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 which means a different kind. And he, uh, this one, eteros, occurs after first two gifts and before the last two. That is why we say two, five, two. So when you present in first seven, he uses two different words. After every two gifts, the Greek word you use is eteros. Imagine two gifts, he says eteros. Then he mentions five, he uses eteros. Then he mentions two others to create a cluster of two, five, two. He also uses another word called alos. The other word he uses is alos, alos, meaning another, which is used within each of the three groups to suggest the inner differentiation. Teaching and stuff here, I'll explain. Saying, at first, he mentions two. One, two gifts, then he says, et rose. Then he mentions five. He says, et rose. But within each gift, he uses alos, 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 alos. So you mention the first one, two. But within it, it's just say, after every gift, he uses a loss. After every gift, he says, a loss. But after, every, after the first two, instead of a loss, he uses a the rose. Then he starts the, fifth, the third one. Then after every gift, within the five, he says, a loss, a loss, a loss, a loss. Then when he finishes number five, he uses a the rose. Then he uses, for the next two, a loss, a loss. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm taking you to Bible school, but no problem. I will, I will tell you where all this is taking us. Let's look at the scripture, first number what? Let's look at uh, first number eight. Let's go to first eight. First eight. For to one is given the word of wisdom with the same spirit, then it says, a loss. A loss. The word of knowledge. Through the same spirit. Move fast nine. And then he says, Eteros. Faith. By the same spirit. A loss. Gifts of healing. By the same spirit. Continue. Fast nine. To another. A loss. Miracles. To another. Prophecy. To another. The son of spirits. To another. Different kinds of tongues. To another. Interpretation. Hold there, please. Digital man, hold there. So you find another interpretation of tongues is the last one and different types of cans. So, the another, when it comes to, to another different kinds of tongues, that is at a rose. But the one down here is a loss. Okay. I don't want to bother you with this. Let me show you where I'm taking you. So, let's see the cluster. Number one, the first cluster that Paul recognizes is what we call revelation gifts revelation gifts they are gifts that come by revelation one of them is the word of wisdom and the other one is the word of knowledge so when paul puts them first he classifies those two revelation gifts 
and one of them is the word of wisdom the other one is the word of knowledge next sunday i'll go into detail to describe how do you recognize that this gift is working within you working within you these are two gifts that have helped me very much shape my way of life and ministry it's been shaped very much by this by a word of knowledge a by word of wisdom i have noticed like one of the things that god has given me is to understand almost every season of the church and to understand what's going to be done for every season is by operation of these two gifts and when you operate these two gifts you can easily think you are smart but it is not that you are smart it's because the holy spirit is the one who is manifesting through you to build his body these two are like gifts of leadership when you have this gift of wisdom and the gift of knowledge they operate on the same platform in other words they are not noisy they are not noisy gifts they are very quiet gifts the gift of these two gifts operate like discernment just find you have a sharp discernment you can easily tell where you are and you can easily tell where you're moving to I can tell when an idea is mine and when an idea is from God. In both of them, you sense a bit of struggle. The second gift, the second cluster, is called is the gift is called effect gifts, effect gifts, effect gifts. This has got five. One, it has faith. Faith is an effect gift. That is, when faith is in operation, utawana matunda ya imani. There will be an effect because the gift you operate as a cause, but you know this is faith when you see the effect. Please hold, hold. Let's watch and make us yes. Allow me to use very natural examples, things that you can easily relate with. Most of the people that have lived what has served me you uh, can be sure that this gift operates in me very clearly it's a gift of faith and i say you know the gift of faith by effect okay for instance we are in kiungani okay are you listening to me we are in kiungani and we are in a tent we build the church, build it, set up the it's one acre of land. And through a word of knowledge, I begin to understand that this is not the place that God is calling us. We discuss, we discuss, we discuss. We try to check on big parcels of land in this area, and not one of them was going less than 60 million. We go through banks checking on and finances, and there were very few banks who were financing church those days. But even if they would get a bank to finance us, we realize it is not practically possible for us to support this. Why do I know? Because the bank which was favorable to us, we were paid close to one million a month. And our total annual collect, our total monthly collection, at best we were doing 1.2. So when you remove one million, how will you be left? How do you survive the 200,000? You have got staff salaries to pay, you've got bills to pay, and you've got a ministry to do because the church, we are not a real estate company. We got and exist just to buy land. We exist to transform the lives of people. And the resources must be used to actualize the dream of transforming God's people. Hello. But we see the leadership we converse and we say, boom, let's go together. We all agree, this is the Lord in this. We step into it. The moment we step into it, we see the effects. Resources come. And we are able to pay the loan and we are able to do ministry. Hello? We are not only able to pay the loan, but we are able to build the buildings without, a, without borrowing anywhere, without a loan. So money came to pay the loan, but money also came to build that these structures were built loan free without any loan on this one to the glory of God. At the same time, we were still building other churches. This is effects. You see, this is faith at work. And there, um, I would like you to know that faith is not meant to be exercised in church. Faith is taught in church but practiced in the marketplace. Oh, hallelujah. I would like you to desire these effect gifts. 
that while Paul say there, desire the best gifts. Say with me, I desire. Come on, somebody say with me, I desire the gift of faith. Whereby you can desire things. That one of the things that the Spirit enables to do is to desire. The Bible says whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe you shall have them. I have known that success is elusive to those who don't like it. Amen. If you want to be successful, you have desire success. If you desire, you want to be great, you have desire to be great. And you must submit to the principles of success and the principles of greatness. Say with me again, I desire faith. Oh yes, that is faith will take you what no, where no man cannot, cannot take you to the glory of God. The other gift is the gift of healing. I've taken a bit of time on that and I should conclude. The, the gift of healing. Gifts of healing. You see, the people that operate on the gifts of healing are very interesting and you can actually see them is that is they just step in, pray for you and they'll ask you to check yourself. Why are they asking you to check yourself? They are looking for the effect. Because healing is known when it has manifested because there must be an effect okay then he talks about the discerning they talk about what the working of miracles the working of miracles so while healing is a miracle but there are other miracles that happen as a manifestation of the holy spirit but they are not in the arena of healing some miracles happen wonders happen by the lord and it's a gift there is also prophecy. Prophecy. We will know the power of prophecy when there's an effect. I have stood here on several occasions. I am not a prophet, but the Holy Spirit manifests through me in several occasions through prophecy. It's whereby you speak to dead situations. You will speak to things that are not. You speak to contradictions. And you see results. You see the effect. That's when I want to exercise the gift of prophecy. Because the gift of prophecy and the faith, they operate one and the other. I don't like prophesy to the obvious people. I like to prophesy to situations that are completely flat. Because there is this uh, kind of prophecies that only come to say that which is normal. Yeah. I'm told some Nigerian preachers when they want to prophesy to you, they want to look at how you are dressed. There we also have designing of spirits. When you design a spirit, you will know the discernment by the effect. Many, many times, I think I said here, that as a minister, especially for ministers, it is, and not only for ministers, but as believers, you need this gift because con men have now come into the body of Christ. All right. Apparently, they have also come in the name of the Lord. And before you can let someone give you a word of prophecy, you have to discern the spirit behind. You have to discern the spirit. And once you notice the spirit is not right, you have a reason as a believer to decline the prophecy. There are some moments, there are some moments I've declined a prophecy, not because what they are telling me is wrong, but because I've discerned that the spirit behind the prophet is wrong. And once I discern the spirit is wrong, I decline the prophecy on the grounds that the spirit is wrong. I now now keep okay. Yeah, tractor. <laughs> now, <laughs> truly, truly, I'm not a fool. Didn't get paid a tractor in the words of Pastor Julius. I don't mind a tractor, right? I don't mind a tractor. I don't mind a tractor, but I design fists and many, many times, especially for. For prophecy, I've always taught you. You will know it is not the Lord. If two things happen, number one, there is no peace within you. Number two, there is no confirmation within you. If you find, especially when you find, oh, that's so strange, you have a reason to 
desire that spirit say, mm, why am I not connecting with this? But if it comes to confirm, but be careful. Be careful. There are people who are able to know what you are going through. Naona yale unayopitia. Wewe ni dada umeumia sana. Listen. Wadada wenka ni sani wameumia. So, uh, there is no good news. There, there is no, there is no breaking news. Wadada wengi wa... <laughs> Wadada wengi, I can almost tell you, eight out of ten sisters wameumia. So, wengine wato kwa banaona ya kwamba umeumia sana. Prophesy, then then you match kwa mashabiki wa kusema prophesy. So so something so. We will get to these things, but let's recite quickly the effects gifts. Number one is one is faith. The other one is gifts of healing. The other one working of miracles. Number four, prophecy. The other one discerning of spirits. Discerning of spirit at the rose. So can I now say, <laughs> say, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, at the rose. Faith, gifts of healing, working miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, at the rose. Okay, number three, vocal gifts. They are called vocal gifts. Vocal gifts. And vocal gifts, he described it as a different kind of tongues. Different kind of tongues different kind of tongues and the other one is interpretation of tongues or simply tongues speaking tongues and interpretation of tongues is a vocal gift these ones are experienced when you speak and they are received through speaking they are to be vocalized we cannot know this gift is operating through you I have actually, the reason why, hello, listen to this, I close here. The reason why many people, when they are f- filled with the Holy Spirit, hello, are you listening to me? The reason why, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you speak in tongues, is not because everybody must speak in tongues when you get filled with the Holy Spirit. The reason why most people speak in tongues when the Holy Spirit enters them is because it is the easiest manifestation. It is the easiest way for the Holy Spirit to manifest I'm operating through you. Because it can be vocalized. So it builds confidence. It builds and it gives it such that it gives such an easy assurance. You live there so assured. That was honestly, that was not me. All right? Then, of course, there are other bedrooms that come by it. And then there's the interpretation of tongues. We will be discussing these things. I haven't found many people that operated on the gifts of interpretation of tongues. But I found a few, and especially where I found interpretations whereby the message of the spirit of the church is proclaimed is for public consumption whereby the speaker speak in tongues but it's not meant for him it's meant for the whole body then god will give someone an understanding of tongues but there are also other moments when they have operated at the same time i want you to note this and i'll be discussing this in the next presentation next sunday many many times you notice i am given I'm personally given in the course of my preaching, you sense I have a liberty to use tongues in public, even when I'm preaching. Every time I speak in tongues, listen to my second word. Listen to the word I will speak immediately after I finish. Listen to it carefully. If you listen to it carefully, you notice there's a huge relationship between what I've said, what you can understand, and what I've followed immediately. It's, it's, it's a way to understand that. There are moments when you are now accustomed to praying in tongues, then you can be praying in tongues and you understand what you are, you, you know what you are praying about. And it comes slowly by slowly as we develop. We will continue to grow into this grace. Shall we close our eyes, every one of us? Let's have a few minutes. 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. Stand on your feet if you can, please. Holy Spirit, move in this place. Move in this place. Move in this place. Move in this place like never before. Move in this place like never before. Teach your people. Impart knowledge. Create a desire, a longing. What do you desire? What do you desire? Do you really want to be used of God? Gifts move you from the kernel person to a spiritual man. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost, somebody. Pray, 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 pray for a few minutes.